parkour, a sport often thought of as for daredevils or adrenaline junkies. But is there more to it than that? And are there any benefits that could help the average person? These are all questions I plan on finding out myself as I take a deep dive into the world of parkour and try and learn it for myself as a beginner. And the reason that I want to do this personally is to one, get myself out of my comfort zone as well as encourage other people to do the same thing. As I think seeking discomfort, trying new things that scare you can be really beneficial. And doing this in a physical kind of way, whether trying a new sport or trying something new with fitness, is one of the most simple ways that you can put this into practice and see massive benefits from, both for your physical health, but also from a mental aspect as well. Now this doesn't mean that you have to do parkour yourself or go jumping off of buildings or anything like that. At the end of the day, it's gonna be something that is completely specific to you that will benefit you the most. So if there's something that you're currently afraid of or something you're too nervous to do, seeking discomfort can literally just be the smallest thing that is specific to you. So even just the smallest challenge or mental obstacle that you can get over is gonna be drastically beneficial for you in other areas of your life. And it's kind of like a muscle. So the more you use it, the more it gets stronger and the better you get at using it in future. So even just doing something something very small, like trying a new sport, getting you out of that comfort zone, uh, or just doing something you were slightly scared of can help you in other areas of your life and get over bigger hurdles. And the way that I plan on getting myself out of my comfort zone on a regular basis is with this series where I hope to branch out and try new different sports and fitness modalities I've never tried before that'll get myself out of my comfort zone, trying new things and testing my conceptions of what fitness actually is. As when you just see things from an outside perspective, you only get a surface level understanding of what that thing is about. And with diving deeper into parkour and having a better understanding of it now and understanding why these athletes actually do what they do, and what it's about for them is been really beneficial for me. And it's something that I wouldn't have gotten if I never actually went and tried this and experienced it for myself. And seeing how these athletes deal and manage with fear when trying to do the stunts that they do is a lesson that I can take away and can actually help me in many different aspects of my own life. And that's a lesson I never would have learned if I didn't try and experience this myself and learn about this particular sport. And that's something I'm hoping to give you guys as well, is by joining me on this journey and through this series is that, one, you'll hopefully get some entertainment from it, but also maybe learn some valuable lessons that you can use and integrate into your own life. Okay, so let's first look at what it actually is. So if you Google it, the first thing that shows up um, is gonna be parkour as a discipline where practitioners aim to get from one point to another in a complex environment without uh, assisting equipment and in the fastest and most efficient way possible. So that's the sort of base definition of what parkour is, but parkour has now turned into a bunch of different elements now. So there's free running as well, which is kind of more the artistic side. So adding in flips and it's not about, you know, getting from point A to point B like how the traditional sense of parkour is. So now parkour has grown into something more than just that definition. There's now lots of different things you can do with parkour and a lot of avenues to which you can go uh, and learn these things, whether it be like free running or more the traditional sense of parkour. So one of the first things I want to talk about in this is the misconceptions about parkour, as I think there are quite a lot. So. One of the common misconceptions I think people get wrong about parkour is that it's for adrenaline junkies. Um, so the thing is about this is when people see these sort of really short clips um, of people doing really extreme stuff, sometimes on like high buildings or so on, or just doing you know a massive stunt uh, that seems to have like a lot of risk to it. When you see that it obviously would be a big risk for a lot of people to take and also it does look very dangerous but when you actually hear like these professional free runners talk about how they do it and why they do it it's a lot more actually about control so 
normal kind of adrenaline junkie things it's about living on the edge of like not having control whereas with par 4 it's the complete opposite so when they're doing these really complex and high skill movements they don't want to have adrenaline because it's the actually the opposite they want to stay really calm and control their emotions so that they can perform at their best and do that complex and high skilled movement so it's actually and that's one of the reasons i really like parkour is the mental aspect is it's basically about conquering that and controlling your mind and be able to limit that fear that you have and just think about it logically and also what you're not seeing is these people those dedication to the time that they put in so a lot of these people that are doing it you're just seeing a quick glimpse of what they're doing they've been training this stuff for 10 plus years and that's why they're so confident in what they're doing and that's why it's not such a leap of faith to them it's just a test of their true abilities and if you actually watch some of these videos like star for example they're a big parkour channel that i have always enjoyed watching i've enjoyed watching for years before i even wanted to do this and you can literally see them how they kind of show the whole experience they show when they get to a new spot when they want to do it they show them planning constantly exactly what to do every step and a lot of what you're seeing these people when they do it they're literally planning every single step up to the run-up to do that jump and they break it down into very small sections and think about it over and over and practice it over and over before they then put it all together and go for it so there is actually a lot more planning that goes involved into these movements before they actually go for them than what people see so I think a lot of people just assume that they just on a whim just go for it but there is a lot of planning involved and it's really important to do so because if you don't that's when you can start to get injured and a really good video that um, I watched on fear and about how uh, free runners deal with it was by Jimmy the Giant he's another really great channel that talks about parkour and it's actually more informative kind of videos so if you want to learn more about parkour and the history of it I'd really recommend checking out his channel as well as that video in particular because a lot of what I'm talking about here is kind of a shortened version of some of the more in-depth stuff that they talk about so I'll put that in the description below as well if you want to check out his channel and another misconception that I think people assume kind of goes hand in hand with this is that it's dangerous and that it's not for the average person to do so again a lot of the clips that you see are people kind of pushing it to an extreme level because that's what's going to get the most views and that's what's going to get noticed but parkour at its base it doesn't need to be done at extreme heights or anything like that you can do it you know anywhere really you can do it just you know at your local park or something somewhere that isn't dangerous to do and just doing parkour itself like the actual movements like some of the more basic ones they're really not dangerous at all like no more dangerous than any other sport and this can be done in a really safe way and i think it could be really beneficial for more people just average people wanting to get involved in it and i think that it won't happen if people still assume that it's really dangerous because if you actually try it and just again do it in a safe manner it doesn't have to be like that next point i want to talk about is the benefits of parkour so as i started training some of the benefits that i found and some of i think can just be beneficial in general even if you just practicing again some of the more basic moves can be really beneficial for developing your overall athleticism and that's something that could translate into other sports so if you do other things it can also help with those as well as it can help strengthen your tendons and ligaments so kind of like how re resistance training or a uh, normal plyometric training has those kind of benefits it's quite similar uh, to parkour but parkour is also just a really fun way to which you can train those aspects of fitness and another benefit to parkour this is kind of the one that i really enjoyed about it not only is it just sort of fun to do but it's also very mentally challenging so even when you're just doing like very small things in parkour it can still be quite scary to do and there were times where i knew i could physically do something but mentally trying to get myself to do it was really challenging and you kind of see that later on in the video i kind of show you like my first session 
as you'll see on like the last one and you can see the development not only of my physical skills but also my mentality and how I just grew more confident with my abilities and then was able to do something that I couldn't do earlier really easily and that just shows the kind of mental hold sometimes your brain has on you from doing things even though you're going to be perfectly fine doing them and I think when you put yourself in those kind of situations where you have to tell your mind to do something and just sort of take control take control of your fear that I think can be really beneficial and finally so where can you go to learn parkour and who do you learn from so where you can go to learn parkour obviously there's YouTube is a very useful tool that you can learn heaps of tutorials on and again as I mentioned there's a lot of uh, parkour channels that are quite educational so like Jimmy the Giant and people like that they're always putting out really helpful videos in which you can start to learn uh, and develop so you can do it from a purely theoretical standpoint to start with just start watching videos and start learning that's how I did basically started this ages ago before actually knowing I was going to do this but I started to figure out the names of a lot of movements and just over time watching them do it more and more helped me sort of get it into my head and figure out how I would be able to do it myself when I started practicing these movements. And in terms of actually like where you can do it outside, that's the amazing thing about pork, uh, porker? parkour is that you can do it anywhere, literally anywhere. If you take a step outside, you'll be able to find something. And again, that's why you've just got to be creative and you'll be able to find somewhere to which you can start practicing doing your jumps, movements, and it can be a lot of fun. Okay, and lastly for this video, I'm just gonna play some clips of my training over this past month. So the first video that you're gonna see is kind of one of my first sessions of practicing parkour, and I'm just gonna talk you through some of the moves I was trying to do, some of the stuff I was trying to work on. And then it's just gonna be a little montage of some of the clips that I collected while doing these practices as I didn't really be talking uh, when doing all of my training as I just wanted to really focus and start to improve on some stuff. But I'll be joining you for the last session again and here's where you'll see most of my progress from the first and the last session as it's done at the same place and this is where you'll see me getting over those mental barriers and just start to improve my skill level and how my confidence kind of grew. But none of the clips I'm going to show you are going to be anything that impressive. Again, I'm still new, so they won't be anything that special, but I still hope that you enjoy the edit that I put together for you, and I will speak to you in a bit. It looks really easy, like you're just getting up on a wall, but it's actually extremely difficult. When I first seen people doing it, I was like, oh, it's gonna be easy, but it's actually really tough. And you know, you can practice pretty much anywhere if you have a wall, so make sure I give that a go. Another thing I'm really struggling with, uh, here is jump into this rail like the distance is not far at all and I've done it from the rail to this wall and the rail to the other wall but just I just you know I know that even if I if I don't get it quite right I'll just hop over it or I'll bounce back N nothing bad's really gonna happen but just the mental block that I have with trying to jump to that rail or, because it's just unknown to me that's something I'm struggling with at the moment and I'm just trying to conquer that hurdle right now is just jumping you know just trying to tap a foot to that rail but we'll see and eat 
eternity later. That's so annoying. I just know I can do it, but it's just your mind plays tricks on you. So I'm gonna leave the rail for today. That's a that's a fail for sure. I'm just not confident enough yet in my abilities to perfectly land on it. And there's no point in risking an injury when you're new. So when you also that's something when you're new to something, take it slow. Don't try and rush, especially with things like this where you seriously can get hurt and the ego can get in the way of a lot of things. But obviously, put your safety first and just take your time with it. You'll start to develop faster. Uh, if you just focus on developing that skill and become confident in those skills as opposed to pushing it too far and just going for something when you're not really comfortable with it yet. That'll do for that. Pretty happy with that though, that's quite far for me. So to even get close to sticking that, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, now what I'm thinking that I'm gonna try and do is do a speed step to this little ledge and rail. Try and hold on, see how that goes. And if you don't know what a speed step is, you're about to see. It'll be, sh uh, it'll be bad, <laughs> but um, roughly kind of what it is. Back again, doing some training. Going to some jumps. Nice. <laughs> stick today. Bit more, a little bit more. 
more distance. Ah, it's pretty scary though. There we go, that's better. Yeah, boy. Nice. Got those clean gaps. <laughs> okay. We are going for the uh, speed step that I tried to do last time and didn't quite get, so going for that again. Definitely have enough power for that, but it's kind of nerve wracking when you're coming straight at this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that felt so good. So good when you get like past that like sort of mental barrier that keeps you from doing something that you just sort of know you can do it's like the best feeling okay we're back here again so this is the final thing that i want to sort of conquer here is to get over that sort of mental barrier and let's jump into this rail so we'll see if my training uh, has helped improve that at all build up my confidence okay so we're gonna get back quite a stick but happy with that oh my heart <laughs> oh that's such a scary feeling but here we go over that first little bump so and again you know it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be it was really easy but very happy with that definitely I was nerve-wracking so I'm glad again got over that hurdle and as you can see like from the last time I was training here already how much i've progressed compared to last time is pretty huge so just remember you're gonna start bad when you first try new things and especially something like this where it's scary you just don't want to you know take your time with it and you will improve you will get better bit by bit okay so i hope you enjoyed watching me go through this process of learning parkour and trying something new getting myself out of my comfort zone and i hope that you learned something from this video and if you did, and as well, if you enjoyed it, please do like this video and subscribe to stay up to date with the next episodes that I do, as well as feel free to comment or message me with what sport or fitness modalities you'd like to see me try next. And I'll be sure to do a video on that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>